I know as of lately, there's something big happening in LA. Well, not just in LA, but it's affecting everyone. Uh, And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is because I have so many different friends who are in the the world of of Hollywood, if you will, show business, Mm -hmm. and they're talking about this writer's strike. Can you Mm -hmm. summarize what's happening and your participation in it? Um, Well, the writers... um uh negotiate with what's called the amptp it's a group of lawyers that represents the companies that um are like disney your warner brothers your nbc and all that uh, a group of lawyers called the amptp um uh, represent them and they negotiate with the writers guild and all the other guilds about for the contracts which lasts every three years um so there are usually the things that we fight for uh, in the Writers Guild, I'm in several guilds, but the Writers Guild I probably identify with the most. I was on the board of directors for them back in between 04 and 06, and I was on the negotiating committee during 07 when we had the last, last strike. So I've been in these meetings with them and everything. And the thing you're fighting for and negotiating for are the terms of the minimum basic agreement. So you're always fighting for the rights of the writers who really are your lower rung, your you know, you're fighting for basic rights, things like health care, basic agreements, um, making sure writers are treated fairly. It's all those basic things that you're fighting. You're not fighting for Shonda Rhimes' salary, you know, that <laughs> type of thing, you know. And many times what happens is you get what are called rollbacks, where they don't want to give you things to uh, have the writers going forward in a line. They're going backwards, you know, so rights get taken away and things like that. And the big issues that are really important right now, um, some are kind of existential, uh, such as uh, artificial intelligence. You know, this has opened up a whole Pandora's box, Carrie. And to be honest, Carrie, you really can't negotiate in good faith on this yet. You kind of have to agree almost to like, look, let's not f- with this right now. But let's agree that we're not going to use this to replace writers or whatever, you know, and we're not even they're not even willing to agree with a basic like uh, detente, (laughs) you know, if you will, on that front, which is crazy. You know, there are uh, there's some issues where they're trying to make writers into like gig workers where they're like daily have daily fees and things like that, which is ridiculous, you know, and taking away a writer's ability to just be a middle class working writer, just be in the middle Mm. class. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, some of it has to do with writer's rooms. The biggest disruptor of the writing business has been the streaming platforms, which is so different from network television. And for those of you not familiar with all this, let me tell you the basic differences. In network television, you would make like 22 episodes of a show and you had um, reruns that ran in prime time. And writers could make a pretty good living, even at the lowest rung, because they had so many episodes. And your writers who had no experience might get a chance, like your staff writer, to even write one of those episodes, because there were just so many. Now, and and if you, let's say you didn't get a job the next two years, which happens a lot in our business, the money you made from the residuals and the replay could help you during those two years that drop. So many times in writing and acting and showbiz, what happens, Carrie, for a lot of your audience that don't know is you might have two really good years and then three like dry years, <laughs> you know, like where nothing's going on. And those two good years are protecting those three dry years. So those that's why some of these agreements are so important and some of them are hard to relate to. Streaming has turned that upside down because a lot of the fees went down in streaming as opposed to network fees. And you're doing maybe eight to 10 episodes instead of 22. So you're losing money in two ways. A third way is there's no such thing as residuals because there's no reruns in streaming. So you're losing money in three ways. So your writers at the bottom are really finding it harder and harder to actually make a living writing, you know? And so a lot of the fights are in these areas. That, that's where most of the fights are for the people that aren't familiar with some of that. So I hope that explains well, some of it. It does explain it. So streaming has disrupted the mm-hmm. the way in which your 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 traditional writer, uh, for lack of a better term, um, can make a living. Right. How do you negotiate with streaming? Well, you have you have to like guarantee um, larger upfront money because before upfront money was lower because they said, Hey guys, this is a new platform. We don't, we're not making any money. We don't know what it is. We have to pay you less right now, but don't worry. We'll talk about it later. Then later comes 
uh, we agreed to this lower amount. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It's like Mm -hmm. some gangsters like you're working with sometimes, you know, some of these issues. So certainly you have to raise the upfront money. You have to have more uh, transparency in streaming because in regular television, you have ratings, which everybody can see. It's public information. In streaming, they have their own metrics that they don't let you see. So there's no transparency. So there's no way to know whether a show is is doing well or it's not doing well. You have to kind of take their word for it, you know. So even in terms of fees and being able to give people raises and things like that, it's all nebulous, you know. So you have to have guarantees. I'm curious about that. I obviously have a show on Amazon and they're very, they don't release ratings and numbers or any Uh of those things. And obviously that works to their benefit and they can say, I've been reading about this too in Hollywood. Why is it okay for streaming? Because it's such a new frontier to decide whether or not they release ratings or is there no such really rating scale for streaming? Yeah. Why? They just don't, they don't have to. That's the business model. No one, there's no rule that says they do, you know, that rule just doesn't exist. So the, the way that it works, and a friend of mine told me this, and it's so true, whenever you have a show on streaming, and this works for almost any platform, I don't know if it, if it uh, pertains to your show, but it might. So just look out for this, Carrie. Here's what they do. Okay. So you, you do a show in your first season, and you're hoping to get a second season pickup, right? And you say, are we going to get a second season you know, first you say, well, how did our show do? And they go, well, it did good. It did good. And then they go, you know, not as good as we would have, we would have liked, we would have hoped. Correct. You know, and you're it. like, well, what does and that mean? Go, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Excellent follow-up question. <laughs> yeah. Excellent yeah. follow-up question. What does that and mean? And they go, yeah. <laughs> they can't tell you. They go, well, you know, in our metrics, we have our metrics. Well, what are those metrics? Can I see them? Oh, no, we can't share them yeah. with you. One well, day, how am I supposed to know that you're telling me the truth? <laughs> <laughs> and so, And so what happens is you wait for a pickup and you don't, you have no leverage. You know, you can't, you have absolutely no leverage because you don't have a show, dude. And then they come back to you and say, okay, so we've decided to pick you up, but here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to... <sighs> Gonna have to give you a tighter yeah. budget, you know. We can't give you as yeah. much money as last year, but you know, we expect you to do the same show and even better with less money. Yeah, but that's and not almost fair. every show goes through that exact same thing. It's not fair, Larry. It's not fair at all, is it? That's a bit. That's what life isn't fair. That's, yeah, life isn't nope. fair. Tis not. So how do you? How long do you see this writer's strike playing out? And I've seen, like, it's a very serious thing. It's like, if you cross, mm-hmm. like, this could affect people's career. Like, if someone crosses the the the, the picket line, is that how you refer mm-hmm. to it? Sure, absolutely. If well, here's the thing. remember you and won't work for you again, right? Or tell me that. Well, you don't want to get, you know, into that type of thing. You know, that's just nasty business. Um, but here's, here's the thing, Carrie, is that all... The three big unions are all having their uh, agreements ending at approximately the same time. So the companies are now talking to the Directors Guild, whose agreement is ending, I think, at either at the end of this month or middle of June, something like that. And then sag after the Actors Union, their agreement ends at the end of June. So they're not in a hurry to get back into the room to talk to writers right now. You know, they want to talk with the directors who the directors union is usually a lot more friendly and simpatico with the AMPTP actors. You don't know what they're going to do. Cause we know they're crazy. You're mercurial. <laughs> Talent is mercurial. They're insane. They're just, yeah. Choose whatever word you want, you know, and, yeah. you know I, I, I'm, I'm in SAG after, so I can say this. Every same, time. same. I'm but, saying uh, we're crazy oh, yeah. people. Go on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I identify with writers here. But, uh, <laughs> So they're going to, I'm sure they're going to go into those negotiations first. So we're looking at July. I mean, that's a long time. And a lot of people are affected during these types of actions. I don't like striking at all. Um, So many jobs that aren't writer's jobs are affected, you know, Mm. Uh, and even ancillary jobs that are in the cities where a lot of production is done, you know, everything from coffee shops to, you know, you know, food restaurants or whatever. So so what do people, how do they make their living in the meantime? Um, there are people who will have to cross the picket lines, right? 
their people will have to go back to work even if the if they wait, I'm asking I don't know no that usually doesn't happen um the because the companies for the most part won't try to produce the same shows what happens is they usually get replaced with reality shows where oh, they're maybe oh, not oh. guild covered and like in the re the last strike more shows like you know the voice and or america's got talent those shows start rising up and you get more of that in fact in there was a, the the strike and there was a strike in 1988 the last two strikes were 2007 and 1988 those are the last couple of strikes um, and in 1988, right after that, like the show Cops came around, you know, Oh, uh, that's why Cops was on Fox because of the strike. Basically, they wanted to put on a show where, you know, wasn't WGA and other, and it turned out to be a huge thing. And then, so you always have this proliferation of these reality type shows, you know, whenever there's a strike, you know, when they don't have shows I where see. they don't have to uh, deal with the guild, 